Today we're talking about the ecliptic plane input catalog. This is defined in this paper, uh, Huber et al. 2016. You can go ahead and visit that paper and uh, explore everything you want to know about the epic, uh, specifically what the columns are, how they're defined, uh, things like uh, how they came up with effective temperatures and surface gravities based on uh, various colors and various indices. Uh, all of that's in here, so uh, you can learn about it there. The catalog itself is contained on MAST, so you can follow the, the MAST link um, here and navigate to catalogs. The EPIC is actually split into six pieces. It's sort of big enough that it needs to be uh, parceled out into half gigabyte or so uh, pieces. So the strategy is to actually download all of these and then programmatically read them in and concatenate them. So that's what we'll do in this notebook. Uh, they're a little unwieldy, so there's a few strategies I'll show for, for joining this all together. Uh, one strategy is to actually tell uh, whatever program you're using what the data types it should expect, which actually just saves a little memory when you're reading it in. So I've actually done that in, in this uh, notebook, which I won't go through, but it's already saved locally, so we can read that in here. Uh, and what I've done is just do a mapping of, of what uh, data type to use in, in Pandas. So we only want to, the, the other strategy is that we only want to read like 16 of the 67 columns. So we'll just have a subset of the columns and then we have that uh, data type dictionary. So there's no way around uh, this though. It's just going to be slow. So what we can do is um, time this and what we'll see is it takes about seven minutes to read everything in with my current setup which is actually a uh, USB drive and a MacBook Pro. So we'll just let that run and uh, come back and see uh, where we stand. Great, so it finished and it took 14 minutes, usually a little bit less than that for me, but um, a little slower this go around. So uh, now we can go ahead and uh, examine this file. So we have a data frame, which is uh, from the collection of all the appended uh, partial data frames, which are these uh, epic, uh, individual epic small catalogs, uh, partial catalogs. Uh, and now we can use those. So uh, the first thing we'll do is actually just save it to a more convenient format so that we can read it in faster later. And that format is called Feather. So you can import Feather. It's a Python module. And we're only saving 16 columns. So we'll call this uh, epic catalog underscore underscore 16 calls dot Feather. And uh, that's the name of the path. And now we can time how long it takes to write this Feather. So usually it takes about a minute might take a little bit longer now. Okay, so that took about one minute and 48 seconds, so a little bit longer than usual. Uh, and it's a decently large file, so about six gigabytes. Uh, so there is an alternative if you didn't want to use uh, pandas to read things in. Um, pandas is pretty good, but uh, there's one sort of hiccup, which is the fact that we have to use floats for integer values in pandas. Uh, and the reason for that is related to uh, this concept of, um, of integers not having an NAN, NAN uh, representation. Uh, and there's a stack overflow issue about that. But anyway, so if you wanted to get around that sort of problem, you could try to use uh, AstroPy, although when I tried it was uh, just as long, in fact longer, just to read one file. Uh, although there's probably some tricks to make this faster. In fact, I've seen a little bit of effort to read large files in little pieces, and so that might help. Uh, another alternative is to use something called Dask, uh, which is relatively new parallel programming, uh, parallel computing library for, for Python. Uh, so you can check out Dask. Um, and read all about it here, dask.pydata.org. And it has all sorts of cool features, and it has a pandas-like interface and all that. So uh, we can actually demonstrate Dask a little bit here uh, just by 
reading things in, it doesn't actually read anything at this stage. It just sort of connects uh, the, the file locations. Uh, and it actually reads things in when you execute a command like this. So df.head, now it actually has to think about things to show this. Uh, similarly, if we wanted to say count up all the different types of object types and their frequencies, we could make a new task, which is do this value counts. Uh, and that's instantaneous, but the, the job itself to compute those takes much longer. Okay, so the job finished and it took uh, about three minutes and uh, there we have the answer, which is, I don't know, something like 50 million stars and uh, for which there's labels and uh, something like uh, about 1 million uh, extended objects.